All right, this is uh, another problem similar to the one that we just did. What I want the you to do is to do this one for this problem. We want to find the deflection at x equals 7 feet and at point C and x equals 7 feet is in here and point C is over here. Vending stiffness is given. And what I want you to do, and well, um, is to fill in these values. And I've given you the equation to use for delta. It's on line four in the um, in the table. You also need to make use of the deflection at the right end. So in other words, you're going to analyze this portion of the beam. You're going to get the deflection at 7 and you're going to get the slope at point B. Okay, so I'll pause the video and do this problem. Alright, I'm assuming that you did the problem. I'm going to go through it. So we're looking at uh, at this portion of the beam. If I look at that, then I have P equals 15 kips. A is 6 feet. B is 2 feet. The total length is 8 feet. And uh, our point of interest is X equals 7 feet. We simply put those values into this expression and we get that delta is 2.53 times 10 to the minus fifth, and of course the positive number means that it's down. And then we, you know, plug these values, <coughs> excuse me, into um, into that expression, and we get that phi two or the angle or rather the slope is 2.625 times 10 to the minus fifth. I use my slope and my little triangle here at the end, that's this one, and um, we get that uh, using similar triangles. The deflection is five times that value. And this one we know is, is, is upward, so, okay. How do we handle the situation where we have, instead of just one load, we have two loads? Well, it's pretty straightforward. We do two separate problems. We do this problem, and we do this problem. And we add the, salute, add the deflections together. This one we already did, so I'm not going to redo it. All we have to do then is do this one. and. Uh, our goal for this problem is to find the deflection at x equals 4 meters, so we're finding it right there. And um, for this problem, we have what? P equals 3 kilonewtons, A equals 6, L equals 6, B equals 0, and our point of interest x is at 4. We plug that into our expression where um, x is less than or equal to A. That is this expression. Plug it in, we get delta is equal to 0 0.0373 meters. And then previously for the 8 kilonewton problem, we got 0 0.05689. We simply add those two together and we get our answer is the sum of those two. Now here's a problem is a little bit more complicated. It doesn't look like we have um, the tables to be able to do this one because this is what we're looking at here. We've got a, um, a beam fixed at both ends with hinges here. Well, how can we analyze that? Well, the way to look at this is three different beams because we have the hinges, we only 
We can only do this because we have the hinges there. We can't do it if there's no hinges there, if there are no hinges there. But, um, okay, so our, let's just say our goal is to find delta at x equals 4 meters, and x equals 4 meters is right here. So um, we're going to break this into three different problems. Let's look at the first one. Let's look at the middle. So I'm taking the middle portion of the beam. If I look at the middle portion of the beam, uh, you'll notice that this is basically a simply supported beam in the center, and I get the reactions at the supports, and what do I get? I get, and this is very straightforward because it's everything symmetrical, I have 8 here, I have 4 here, and 4 here. If I have 4 going up here, then I have 4 going down for the other portion of the beam, the cantilever beam. And same thing, if I have 4 here, I have 4 going down there. And um, notice that this right-hand cantilever beam is only 1 meter, whereas the one on the other side is 2 meters, so it's a little bit shorter. So we analyze this, this, and this separately. So for the left one, I have what? P equals 4 kilonewtons. A is 2 meters. B is 0. And the overall length is 2 meters. On the other side, I have P is equal to 4 kilonewtons. A is 1 meter. B is 0. L is 1 meter. And for the middle, I have P is equal to 8 kilonewtons. Notice because the 8 kilonewtons is there. 8 kilonewtons, A is 2 meters, B is 2 meters, L is 4 meters. So we can analyze these separately. Now what do we get out of them? What we're going to get is I'm going to get the deflection there for this one. I'm going to get the deflection there for this one. I'm going to get the deflection there for that one. Now the trick to this problem is how to combine those three deflections that we calculate. Now this is a little bit... <laughs> um, cluttered, but I'll just explain to you how this works. So in other words, these black deltas, delta 1, delta 2, and delta 3, are what we calculate from the previous description that we did. So I'm going to get this, this delta 1 there. I'm going to get this delta 2 there. Now what is the meaning of delta 3? Well, delta 3 is what I, I have. I draw a straight line between the two endpoints, and delta is the distance between that straight line and the deflected shape. So in other words, my overall, I know that my overall deflected shape is, is going to follow this path. I'm going to bend down here, bend like that, and then bend like that for my three beams, three beams, that's the way they would look. Now I have to combine them. Well, okay, so um, the trick to this problem is that I want to get this overall distance. I don't want just delta 3. I want to add in this little green region here, the green delta, and um, how do I get that green delta? Well, to get that green delta, I have to use this trapezoid here to get the green delta. And it's pretty straightforward because, um, because it's the average of these two. So in other words, it's a trapezoid, and it's in the middle of the trapezoid. So I get that I get the delta one, I get the get delta two, and it's the average of the two. So it's delta one plus delta two over two. So to get the green delta, I just t 
take the average. And then when I'm all done, I add the green delta to this delta 3, and that gives me, gives me my answer. So um, the, you can plug in these values into the um, expressions. This is the, for the cantilever beam, this is the expression for the delta for the two, um, for the two cantilever beams, so that I can get my, easily get my delta 1 is that much, my delta 2 is that much, then my green delta is the average of those two, so there, that gives my green delta, and then I have to get, um, this is my equation for my delta for my simply supported beam at uh, x equals 2 meters because I'm analyzing the simply supported beam separately. So I get my delta 3 is that, and then I simply add the 0.02 to the 0.0356 together, and I get my answer. You should be able to do a problem like this with even different geometries. Here's another problem. It's our classic diving board problem. And we know what the diving board deflected shape is going to look something like that. And um, now here's the problem. Well, okay, first we're looking for delta C. We're looking for the deflection at point C. Now the problem here is that we don't know what line of the table to use because this is a simply supported beam with a point load outside the region between the two supports. And so the trick to doing this particular problem is that we need to flip the problem upside down. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the reactions that we've done a million times. I'm not going to go through it. Um, and when we get those reactions, we get that um, at A, we have 30 kilonewtons going down. At B, we have 40 kilonewtons going up. And what we're going to do is to take this free body diagram and flip it upside down. So in other words, this is 30 kilonewtons going down. We're going to put 30 kilonewtons going up. This is 40 kilonewtons going up. We're going to show 40 kilonewtons going down. This is 10 kilonewtons going down. We're showing 10 kilonewtons going up. If we do that, then it looks like the simply supported beam that fits our chart. So in other words, if I'm looking at this this is, in a way, our standard problem. If I'm looking at this, <clears throat> I now have a simply supported beam with a load of 40 kilonewtons. And that is in line, is on line four in our chart. <coughs> Excuse me. And what we're going to do is we're going to find the delta right beneath the load. And so if I look at this picture, well, it looks like this here, fits our chart right there. If I look at that figure, what do I have? I have P is 40 kilonewtons, A is 1 meter, B is 3 meters, L is 4 meters, and our point of interest is at X equals 1 meter. And so I can solve that problem using the expression on line 4, and I get that, plugging all those values in, I get that delta B is 0.01 meters. Now, how do I, so in other words, that gives me that deformation. How does that translate to my diving board problem? Well, again, we have to use the geometry. Now, if we look, this little purple region in here, that little sort of portion of an arc is where on our on our diving board 
problem. Well, that purple region is right there. So what we found, if we look at it, by getting delta B, again, what do we do? We draw a straight line between the two endpoints, and that delta B is this distance right there. How can I figure out what my delta C is, which is, the, which is what we want? Again, we have to use geometry, and I create this triangle here from that, and that's this triangle here. So in other words, there's my delta B, there's my delta C, this is one meter, this is three meters, and I simply use this triangle to go from delta B, which we already calculated, to get delta C. So how does that look? Well, using similar triangles from that, we get that. Uh, delta B over 1 is equal to delta C over 4. I get delta C is equal to 4 delta B. And um, my end result is delta C is equal to 4 times 0.01. All right, why don't you try doing this problem? Again, we want to find the deflection at C. It's our diving board problem. The only thing different is the geometry. You have to find the re start by finding the reactions and then um, flipping and then flip it upside down. So pause the video and uh, do this particular problem. Okay, I assume that you finished the problem. I'm going to go through it. Um, we get the reactions. You can all do that. There are my reactions. 48, I have 48 down there, 128 up there. I flip this problem upside down. I have the 48 going up. I have the 128 going down. I have the 80 going up. And I use this particular problem to solve for my delta B. Uh, if I look at this, if I look at this, then what do I find? Well, I have what is my P? 128. My point of interest is at x equals 5. A equals 5, B equals 3, L equals 8. I plug that into my expression on line 4 of the of the chart, which is which is this for x less than or equal to A. I plug in all those values and I get that um, I get that um, delta is equal to 0 0.06 meters. I then need to, um, same thing there, I need to use the geometry and, um, and you know, as we, as we saw, what do we create? We create this um, portion of an arc there. And that is the same as, as this here. And now I have, I get my triangle that we're going to create. Looks like that. And I have um, that value is 0 0.06. That creates this particular um, triangle shape. I use this um, to create my similar triangles. 0 0.06, 0 0.06 over 5 is delta C over 8. I then solve for delta C. I get 0 0.096. Okay, I'll stop there.